Welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba. We and Vince Rowe. And Vince Rowe. Hosting the show. Sidecarring. All right. We've got Sean Worthington, uh, president and author of Cloudcoin Consortium. All right, Sean, welcome to the show. I'm really proud to have you on our show. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Give our audience just a brief, brief, excuse me, a brief background on yourself, and I want to jump right into this Federal Reserve launching FedCoin. Sure, I've been a computer science instructor for about 17 years, and I'm getting a PhD in computer information systems. And that's when I discovered that monetary systems are, in fact, information systems. Money is data, and I created my own currency and have a patent on that. Great. Name of the currency? Cloudcoin. There we go. I want to make sure it's out. Cloudcoin.com. Or is it .io? Uh, if you go to cloudcoin.global. There we go. It out. Got it. Tell me about this. Uh, the Federal Reserve might launch FedCoin. And I want to know what it means. What's the significance of it when the financial institutions like the Fed uh, and the IMF start doing this, start creating their own cryptocurrency? Well, they're certainly starting to see the value that these cryptocurrencies provide and that they are, at, in fact, a legitimate type of money that they can create them themselves. And so that is a big, significant development because up until now, it's been pretty much just libertarians that have been interested in digital currencies. I, I agree. I think Vince had a question for you about the um, uh, what does the Fed want to accomplish, right? Yeah. So, you, you know, what I'm trying to figure out is that, you know, I'm a neophyte and all this stuff. I'm, I'm trying to get up to speed from being in a an old hedge fund guy and financial guy. So I'm trying to figure out is that what's the what's the entry level? How do you get into this and what's the, the base to understand? It's that's a big thing. You mean uh, you know how to understand it? Yes. I mean well, so you, could, you know people have been trying digital currencies for a long time and in fact mm -hmm. in California we had something called e gold and everybody took their gold and they put it in a vault and they issued digital certificates against it. Mm -hmm. But then a thief came in and knocked down the door, took all the gold and the vault. That thief was the state of California. <laughs> but it showed that you know, that digital currency did not work. Uh -huh. <laughs> and we have this problem. It's called the physical integrity problem of digital money. And that is, how can you stop the government from shutting it down? Or how can you stop you know, these counterfeiters from trying to counterfeit it or stop um, somebody from... Uh, some hacker from just stealing everybody's money. Is that why we're we're going to get FedCoin to, to try and reduce that? Well, you know, I might actually get the exact opposite because the Federal Reserve and the federal government created the Federal Reserve. I mean, the bankers and the uh, and the government created the Federal Reserve basically so that the bankers could be able to loan money anytime that they wanted to, and the government would be able to borrow money anytime that they wanted to. And so it's kind of a hack. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if they were to create their own digital currency like Bitcoin, they would probably use it for their own purposes. Something like <laughs> Bitcoin they could use to uh, you know, automatically redistribute wealth. It would be pretty interesting. And one of the things in your book you always talk about the society is uh, you could destroy it or build it up. You know, explain that to is, is, is the, the risks. That's, that's right. So money is basically data. And we all look at the prices and the money that we have and the money that we're going to spend, mm -hmm. and we make decisions based on that. So when I get up in the morning and I want to go to work, I've got a lot of different places, a lot of different choices of where I could work, and money helps me decide that because I can look at which job is going to pay the most. And when I go to buy some eggs, if I've got two cartons and they're the same eggs, basically, but different companies and one's a little bit higher than the other one, I will choose the cheaper one, and that's going to add more efficiency to the economy. Mm -hmm. And so money controls all of our decisions. It's extremely important. In, in, in so me, is that I'm looking out there at the Bitcoin world and, and, and the spectrum, and, and I see, see CloudCoin. Is that how does CloudCoin differentiate itself from everybody else out in the market? Well, CloudCoin is the first cloud-based currency. And instead of having to have a public key and a private key and an account on a public ledger, that's what you have to have with the cryptocurrencies. Mm -hmm. And so does the person that you're sending money to. They have to also have an uh, account on the public ledger as well as a private key and a public key. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Instead, cloud coins themselves have that information. And so if I want to give you cloud coins, I don't have to log into anything. I don't have to sign up for anything. I don't have to put any, remember any passwords or usernames. I just give you the files, and then you check them to see if they're real or not with this global counterfeit detection system that we have. 
Oh, that's interesting. We were talking about wallets earlier. so Yeah, we were talking about wallets. Is this going to eliminate the need for a wallet, or it's just eliminate the, the middlemen that are between you and us? Well, when you talk about Bitcoin, the Bitcoin really doesn't have a real wallet. It doesn't hold any of your Bitcoins. Your Bitcoins are on some servers somewhere uh, on, the, on a public ledger. The wallet is just a way for you to basically control them, and the wallets that the cryptocurrencies use they're like 165 gigabytes for Bitcoin right now. They're really huge. So uh, for us, we just need to f- store your coins in a file, or, or I'm sorry, or a folder. And so we actually embed them in JPEGs, and then we put that JPEG in a folder. If you've got a folder wh- where you keep all your money, mm-hmm. then that's the equivalent of a wallet. Yeah, it seems like this is like the wave of the future. Everything's going to go to a Bitcoin that's yeah. uh, cloud-based. Yeah, and he's written a book about it, Beyond Bitcoin. Right. <laughs> the future of digital currency. Yeah, so that's the that's the next thing. That's fits like a sleeve into the, my next question is that how does that how does that uh, you know see how do we see that in the future? I mean, how, what are we going to see now? So the in the future there is great chances of wonderful things happening, but there's also some chances of some very bad things happening. And so with blockchain the way or with cryptocurrency right now the way that they are able to stop counterfeits is that they record every transaction that's ever made in the blockchain. That's why the blockchain is always growing. Mm -hmm. And you can read the transactions that have happened and you can uh, add new transactions, but you can't delete any transactions and you can't change any transactions. And what this means is that if somebody was to be able to get your account number, they'd be able to know how many Bitcoins you have, Mm -hmm. be able to know all the transactions you made. Mm -hmm. And so that's a privacy concern. If the government was to have that, they could create what I call blockchain socialism. That's where they give everybody a number on hmm. this account, and they and they redistribute wealth, and they track everybody. Ah, I got you. So now, what what jumped out of me on this on this little sheet I have a little bit of information? It says it has the best four letter word that starts with F. I know free. Uh huh. And it, how we how can we get a copy of your book free? We like we have a marketing partner called DigitalFrontierNews.com. DigitalFrontierNews.com. Okay. That's right. I just want to restate it. Make sure they and if you go sign up for their newsletter, you get my book for free, as well as five free cloud coins to try out. Wow. And that'll be um, Where's you know, my pin? your education in the cloud currency. <laughs> Wonderful. William, thank you. This is a, I, like I said, as I, I'm coming up to speed on this stuff very quickly, but uh, like I said, is that you know, once you have a baseline, it seems like there's the next level. You know, what's coming on and what's around the corner, and William's book is, is one of those. Sean's book. Sean. Sean first, but it's not the last. Class yeah, Sean. Much better. <laughs> it's all right. That last person called him, called him uh, uh, Vern. It's all right. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Uh, but Sean, you're going to be with us for another segment, so we can start drilling down Wonderful. into some of the some of the details on this stuff, get get Vince up to speed on the Bitcoin. Not that I'm an expert, but uh, you can get us both a little bit further on the road. Um, let's, give me a, you know, a little insight on some of the things, the highlights you want to cover on the next segment. Well, uh, we can certainly talk about the nature of money, if you like. Uh, we can talk about perfect money. We can talk about how to judge and look at currencies and figure out which one's the best and which one's the worst. I want to know that one because everybody wants to know that one. How do you know you're into a good one or a bad one? Because I'm going to start getting uh, paid uh, in crypto from all the crypto people that I'm talking to. Very good. And that that is a bit important one. All right, let, Sean, we'll come right back to you on the other side of this break, all right? Okay. All right, we'll be right back with Sean Worthington, President, CloudCoin Consortium, cryptocurrency expert and author, cloudcoin.global is the web address. You've been listening to Michael Yorba and Vince Rowe on CEO Money. We'll be right back. Hello, welcome back to CEO Money. I'm Michael Yorba, your host with Vince Rowe, Sidecar Willie. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Happy to be here. I'm glad you're here. All right, we're talking with Sean Worthington, author, president, CloudCoin Consortium, cloudcoin.global. All right, when we left off, we were talking about how do you find the good coin from the bad coin? Vince has got a bunch bl- The uh, natural coin? Yeah. Uh, Vince has got a bunch of questions for you, but l- lead us off, Sean. To start us down the merry road. Sure. Well, you know, economists haven't really understood what money is. And I'm getting a degree in computer information systems. I realize that monetary systems are, in fact, just information systems. And their job is to track what kind of value that we create as individuals for the economy. 
and make sure that we get the same value out. And money is just data in that system that uh, that is used for our computations. And uh, we realize that if we take all of the rules that we have applied to perfect databases and just apply them to monetary systems, that we could create a model for what is perfect money. And of course, uh, some of the most important things is that the money can't just disappear or cannot appear or uh, cannot change ownership. And so we call that physical integrity. And that is just uh, you know making sure that um, there's no counterfeiting. That's part of the money just appearing in the system. And uh, loss is a bad thing. And uh, there's a whole bunch of other rules that have to do with databases. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, that's interesting too. I'm gonna I'm gonna come back to that in in a minute if we have if have time, Sean. But uh, so someone like me, let's just say that what if I missed the gravy train? I didn't I didn't catch it when when it should be, and I I, I see this juggernaut just rolling down the tracks. Where where and how do I run to catch up and and, and jump on and be part of it? What's your suggestion in seeing the whole world of what's available today? Well, I think that. You, uh, we are actually just at the tip of the spear. And so while we did have a big, you know, uh, uh, bubble, and that mm-hmm. bubble basically burst, I think, mostly because Bitcoin could not take very many people using it. it I, I'm glad I missed that part. Yeah. <laughs> it started taking about 20 uh, hours for the, just to transfer, just to handle one transaction. Uh. But there's a whole new generation of digital currencies that are falling behind, and I think that... The, out of the entire world population, that less than a tenth of a tenth, a tenth of a, a one percent have actually used this, and so there's still plenty of opportunity to get in and, and make investments and make money. Okay, so what do I do? What's what's first steps? Well, you know, there's only one thing that I invest in, and that's CloudCoin. Now, yeah, I, I, well, let's <laughs> let's say uh, I'd like to invest in CloudCoin. How did besides going to your website and uh, CloudCoin.global? What's uh, what's the process? So uh, with, with something like the cryptocurrencies, generally speaking, you download a wallet, and then the next thing you have to do is get on the, an exchange, put your dollars on the exchange, just like an escrow account, and then that allows you to make purchases. And so that's a lengthy process. It can take about three weeks to do that. Mm-hmm. We think that the best exchange is called BitShares. And if you get on BitShares, it's a decentralized, more private exchange. And... Uh, CloudCoin is going to be on that probably within a month or two. Oh, so we can look for you on there. Is That's it, right. Uh, and so the, and you'll, you'll have all of that information. I got a question. Why does it take three weeks? Well, uh, you know, the, to, to begin with, you have to download the wallet, and the wallet is 165 gigabytes, and that can take several days. But then once you get that, you have to open an account with them, and they have these certain know-your-customer rules. And so you have to uh, prove that you're... You have to send them your driver's license, and you have to send them your uh, gas bill, and you have to then uh, wait a while for them to process that, and you have to allow them to take money out of your bank account and then put money back in. So it's a whole long process because of those government regulations that they have to deal with. And so I was just going to ask, so there is some regulatory body watching all of this and making sure that there's some sense of security at, let's say, the Fed level, because this brings us back to your topic today. That's right. In fact, the IRS just went to one of the major exchanges and demanded that they turn over the names of everybody that was making money. And in fact, uh, really? the, the, the exchange did do that. And so there's a lot of people that made a lot of money on Bitcoin and other currencies that have had to pay a lot of taxes. Yeah, it's just going to ask, there's tax ramifications to this too, so you have to manage taxes as well. Absolutely. And so, uh, you know, most people want to try to stay away from those kind of exchanges <laughs> <laughs> where, the, you know, the IRS has a direct... Uh, data connection. Wow. The, you know, we, we've got a little bit more time, maybe about a minute or so. Let me jump in one last question mm-hmm. if we can. Um, why do you think Bitcoin is headed for major problems? Well, the problem with Bitcoin is that it can only handle a certain amount of transactions, about seven transactions per second. And so that is a problem. The more people use it, the slower it gets. And so the, then they, people don't want to use it. Mm-hmm. Another problem is that it's just uh, not quantum safe. And we have something called quantum computers these days. And the quantum computers, once they come out, they could probably hack that code in about two minutes. So we can 
uh, that would be the end of that. Yeah, I was just talking with a, with a guy that uh, invented the uh, um, Hotels.com platform the other night, and uh, he was saying that, that uh, once the Russians get their hands on quantum uh, computers, he was saying, acting like they didn't, they didn't think they had them right yet, is there's going to be a whole new level of paranoia. I can tell you that all the major governments, China, Russia, United States, they all have warehouses full of quantum computers. Right now, we're just seeing them on the open market, which you can buy them for $10 million. If we can buy them, the government has probably had them for decades. Oh, so there's a whole new level of paranoia. We yeah. just don't know. We should be aware of Yeah, the old Cray computers. Are, the way that we've, the uh, you know, we've changed our system so that with CloudCoin, we use shredding. And so we take the data and we put it all over the world. And so even if somebody was to hack into the server, they wouldn't be able to get enough data to put it together to make sense of it. They got chunks. They get chunks of it, and that's it, huh? And yep. they'd have to put all those chunks together to be able to... They would have to attack 25 different clouds in order to be able to put that information together. Just amazing. Just amazing nowadays. So, so I think that shredding, the way that, that uh, we're, we're doing with CloudCoin is definitely the future because it is quantum safe. It doesn't matter if people are able to decrypt it or not. So give me, give me your, your uh, vision of where CloudCoin is going to go from the Fed perspective one more time. Is that meaning is that do you think this is a reality? Is it, is it going to happen? And what would be the barriers? So CloudCoin, I believe, is going to be, I mean, it's already the world's most private currency. And it's going to allow us to trade by just sending each other text messages. And uh, that is going to make it just about impossible for the governments to tax and the governments to know what's going on or and to, uh, to invade in your privacy as the economy. I think that's going to really make big, giant changes for civilization. Wow, it will. Global, global impact, right? Yes. Yeah, and so yeah, what's, uh, what, are they going to be able to regulate it coming up, or is it just going to be a juggernaut that doesn't stop? Yeah, the whole point of it is that the gov- nobody can stop it. No governments yeah. can drop nuclear bombs. There's nothing they can do. Well, how, long, how far off are we, do you think, from texting? Our, our, our coins back and forth with each other. Well, we got some guy working on it now. He said it'll be done in three days. So, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's quantum, huh? <laughs> he got one of the new two, $20 million quantum computers. <laughs> okay, so, so what do I have to do to get... I didn't uh, understand your question. You said how, how long until we be a, are able to text each other coins? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah th- three or four days. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> how, do we, how do we get some of your coins? Uh, you know, if you go to digitalfrontiernews.com and yeah, sign up for their newsletter, you can get my book and five free cloud coins, or you can just Google buy cloud coins. You'll find them there as well. Uh, okay. I think we'll just have to do that. Very good. Right. Right. Sean, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. We'll have you back again because in three days, I want to hear about this thing. Yeah. That's right. wonderful. Right. Michael will send me all the coins from my phone to your phone. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sean Worthington, President, CloudCoin Consortium, cryptocurrency expert and author, cloudcoin.global. And uh, you've been listening to Michael Yorba, Vince Rowe on CEO Money. Vince is going to sit in for me while I'm uh, on assignment in Lake Tahoe. We're going to take a short break right now and come back on the other side with Phil Aguirre. Uh, Prepared Capital is the founder of that company. We'll be right back. <laughs> 